This is the first video on the C7 rifle. In this video, you will learn the following. Characteristics and description. Safety precautions. And safe handling with no magazine fitted. The C7 is the principal small arms weapon of the Canadian forces. Its role is virtually universal, as it is used throughout the range of conflict, from nuclear war to peacekeeping and internal security. The initial stage of this lesson covers the characteristics and description of the C7 rifle. First, we will cover the eight characteristics. It is a gas-operated, magazine-fed, air-cooled, semi-automatic or automatic weapon. It is capable of quick and accurate fire at short-range opportunity targets. It is capable of a high rate of accurate, rapid fire at ranges up to 300 meters when used by an individual. It can provide effective section fire at ranges up to 600 meters. It can be fitted with a bayonet for close quarter fighting. The magazine holds 30 rounds. The rifle weighs 3.3 kilograms and 3.8 kilograms with a fully loaded magazine. And with its self-loading and fully automatic capability and 30 round magazine, a high standard of fire control is necessary to prevent wastage of ammunition. Now, let's cover the description of the C7 rifle. The C7 rifle consists of the following major components. The upper receiver group and the lower receiver group. These major components are locked together by a pivot pin located forward of the magazine opening and a takedown pin located immediately forward of the butt. Both locking pins are set in the lower receiver group. The upper receiver group comprises the upper receiver, the barrel, the bolt, and bolt carrier. The upper receiver is fixed to the barrel and houses the bolt, bolt carrier, and the cocking handle. A carrying handle which incorporates the rear sight is attached to the top of the upper receiver. The ejection port is situated on the right side of the upper receiver and is protected by a dust cover which is opened by the forward or rearward movement of the bolt. To the rear of the ejection port is a spent casing deflector for left-handed firers. A manually operated forward assist fitted on the right rear of the upper receiver is always used to push the bolt fully forward. The barrel is fitted with a flash suppressor. The barrel is surrounded by two interchangeable aluminum-lined glass fiber-filled nylon handguards which also serve to protect the gas tube. The front sight assembly is fixed to the barrel. The bolt is operated by the cocking handle, located at the top rear of the upper receiver group. The bolt has a rotating head, which locks into the barrel when the weapon is to be fired. The face of the bolt head is centrally holed, to allow the firing pin to move forward to strike a chambered round. We will now move to the lower receiver group. The lower receiver contains the trigger mechanism, the pistol grip, and magazine opening. A three position selector lever is located on the left side, S for safe, R for repetition, and auto for automatic. The selector lever cannot be placed on S until the weapon is cocked. A bolt catch located on the left side enables the bolt to be held open or released from the open position. 
a magazine release button is located on the right side. The butt is made of glass fiber reinforced nylon and incorporates a storage compartment for a cleaning kit. Access to this compartment is gained through the butt plate. The upper portion of the butt houses a buffer and a return spring. The butt is available in two lengths, normal and short. We are now ready for the second stage of the lesson, the safety precautions. On the order, for inspection, clear weapon, adopt the standing load position and hold the rifle by the pistol grip, forefinger outside the trigger guard. Hold the handguard in an underhand grasp with the other hand. The left foot should be advanced one pace. The muzzle should be at an angle of about 1,000 mils. Grasp the cocking handle in an overhand grasp with the right hand and pull the action to the rear. Hold it there and push in the bolt catch with the forefinger of the left hand. Push the cocking handle fully forward. Return the right hand to the pistol grip and return the left hand to the handguard. Tilt the weapon to the left and inspect the chamber to ensure that it is clear. At night or in bad light conditions, feel with your fingers to ensure that the chamber is clear. Pull the cocking handle to the rear and allow the action to go forward under control. Fire the action and close the ejection port cover. Step back with your left foot to the at ease position. Ground the rifle with the ejection port up and the front sight in line with the toe of the right boot. Unfasten both pouches and remove the contents. Inspect all pouches, magazines and dummy rounds to ensure that there are no live rounds present. Upon completion of this drill, you are to replace all dummy rounds and magazines in your pouches, fasten your pouches, pick up your rifle, and stand at ease. Safety precautions are to be carried out before and after instruction, before stripping, during issue and return to stores, before and after range practices, when the safety status of the weapon is in doubt. The final stage of the lesson is on safe handling of the C7 rifles with no magazine fitted. When receiving a rifle from another soldier or on picking up a rifle, point the muzzle in a safe direction and carry out the following actions. Pull the cocking handle to the rear and hold it there. Check and ensure that the chamber is clear. Allow the action. Fire the action. Close the ejection port cover. Never point the rifle at anyone in jest. It is extremely important that each soldier knows the capabilities and components of the C7 rifle so that he will be able to fire and handle the rifle with ease. Remember to handle the C7 safely at all times. This will prevent possible injury to yourself and others.